Hello and welcome again to this platform of Drishti IS. In this explained series, uh, we have already done, especially in geography, three videos. One was on Indian Ocean Dipole. The second one was on the El Nino La Nina events, the ENSO events. And the third one, which was somewhat of factual nature, it was on the important mountain passes of Himalayan region. This is the fourth in that series. And the topic for today's discussion is Madden-Julian Oscillation. Many of you might be aware of this, but there are a lot of uh, confusion as far as what exactly is an MJO uh, or what are its effects. Uh, and these are the two important points which it is expected that the ex examiner will ask from you. What is an MJO uh, or what are its effects? So let's try to understand this. As far as MJO is concerned, it was discovered in the year 1971, clear? It was discovered in the year 1971 by two scientists, Ronald Madden and Paul Julian. Clear? So, you, if you want, you can remember this as well. But even after 50 years, so this was in the year 1971, today is 2020, even after 50 years, almost 50 years, scientists do not exactly know what causes the MJO events or what exactly triggers this MJO events. Similar to uh, the IOD as well as the ENSO events where again we are not sure what exactly causes the anomalous behavior of the Indian Ocean. Sometimes the sea surface is warmer in the Arabian Sea. Sometimes the sea surface is warmer in the Bay of Bengal that is the sometimes it is the Western Indian Ocean which is at a higher temperature. Sometimes it is the Eastern Indian Ocean. Similarly, uh, in the case of El Nino La Nina events, uh, during La Nina, it is the Western Pacific, which is at higher temperature. During El Nino, it is the Eastern Pacific, which is at higher temperature. And there also, we don't know what triggers uh, these anomalous events. So here also, uh, if you ask me what exactly triggers this MJO cycle, so I'll not be able to explain this because nobody knows. And it is still a topic of research. Scientists are doing research. If at all, they'll come up with some uh, conclusion. We can discuss it sometimes. Okay. So, let's discuss it uh, as far as our exam is concerned. Now, uh, this MJO is a fluctuation in tropical weather fluctuation in tropical weather or climatic conditions. So, in this aspect, what aspect? Tropical weather. It has similarity with the El Nino La Nina events as well as the IOD events. Clear? So, if you want, you can write this point that it is a fluctuation in tropical weather uh, or climatic conditions. And the second point what you should uh, try to understand is that it is like a eastward moving, it is like a eastward moving pulse, eastward moving pulse of cloud, cloud cover pulse of cloud precipitation and associated winds. It is like a eastward moving pulse of excess of cloud precipitation or associated winds which typically reoccurs which reoccurs after every 30 to 60 days. So, 
So, these two points you should in fact write it in your notes. Number one, it is a fluctuation in tropical weather. And the second thing is that around the equatorial region, uh, it is like a eastward moving pulse of cloud precipitation and associated winds which reoccurs after every 30 to 60 days. The third point which you should in fact write is It starts from, from where this pulse start or from where this eastward movement actually begins. It starts from Western Indian Ocean along the uh, equatorial region and then it crosses the, what is the important uh, landmass? it crosses the maritime continent that is the Southeast Asian countries and Australia. So, it crosses the maritime continent that is Australia and then fades away in the Eastern Pacific. So, for this whole movement for approximately you can say around 15 to 20,000 kilometers, uh, it takes almost 30 to 60 days. So, depending on the speed of movement of this pulse, it could be reoccurring after every 30 days or it could take uh, almost 60 days. It could be more than that as well. So, this particular pulse actually moves between uh, roughly 14 to 30 or 29 kilometers per hour. So, this is generally the speed of movement of this pulse in the eastward direction. So, what are the three points which we have studied, the elementary or the basic points as far as MGO is concerned? Number one, it is concerned uh, with the tropical weather. Number two, it is a eastward moving pulse of enhanced precipitation eastward moving pulse of enhanced cloud cover and associated winds. It starts from the western Indian Ocean that is towards from the east, eastern coast of Africa. Then it crosses the Indian Ocean. It crosses the maritime continent. It crosses basically uh, the southeast Asian countries, Australia. And then uh, traverses this Pacific Ocean and near to the uh, South American coast or you can say the eastern Pacific it gradually uh, fades away. Okay, so, it undergoes, uh, you can say it is deactivated. Clear? Now, let us try to understand it with the help of diagram. This is Africa. India, Southeast Asian countries, Australia and then South America. Clear? Now, what is an MJO? This is North America. Okay. And this is equator. Try to understand. It is observed, it, in fact it was observed by the uh, above mentioned scientists that somewhere around this region that is near to the equatorial region in an extensive uh, region in fact, there is enhanced water vapor. And this enhanced water vapor or you can say there is a convective cell which is generated after every 30 to 60 days. And this convective cell that means there is ascendance of air from this region. This ascendance of air we have discussed this point in the IOD class as well as in the El Nino class that this ascendance of air will lead to adiabatic cooling and this adiabatic cooling will lead to condensation of water vapor. So, this is the 
oceanic surface the air is rising air is containing a lot of water vapor this water vapor when it will rise it will get cooled off and it will undergo condensation and this will lead to formation of cloud cover clear this condensation will eventually lead to precipitation as well so there will be precipitation so after every 30 to 60 days it is observed that there is a enhanced precipitation in the western indian ocean around equatorial region clear this is point number 1 when this air will rise it will undergo divergence clear the air is rising and if the air is rising from this region there will be creation of low pressure condition near to the surface of ocean and there will be associated high pressure conditions which will be created from this relatively higher pressure now this high pressure means we are comparing the pressure at this atmospheric level from here there will be divergence and this divergence of air this air will somewhere it will fall or you can say there will be subsidence of this air somewhere so uh, you can say this is the magnified version of this diagram now from the region from where there is ascendance of air there will be enhanced precipitation and in the region where there will be subsidence of air there will be what dry conditions the subsidence of air will lead to adiabatic heating process subsidence leads to adiabatic heating adiabatic heating will lead to increase in relative humidity sorry it will lead to decrease in relative humidity and thereby it will create dry conditions so wherever there is subsidence of air mass the conditions are dry we have discussed this in the previous two uh, videos as well so if you want to have some concept you can go to the that video okay so what we know now that from the region where there is ascendance of air there will be excess of precipitation or enhanced precipitation and in the region where this air will uh, undergo subsidence you will have dry condition or you can say this will lead to suppression of precipitation so suppression of rainfall or suppression of precipitation this will be the region of suppression of precipitation and this will be the region for enhanced precipitation clear now this particular phenomena also occurs in the case of iod as well as el nino but there is a difference let's quickly recall what we have studied in the el nino class in the during the la nina events from the western pacific there is ascendance of air just try to understand and there is subsidence in this region and this is the walker cell here there will be good precipitation or more than average precipitation here there is a, a higher precipitation and in this side there will be suppression in precipitation clear this is also occurring in this in this case but there is a difference the difference is that in the case of mjo this is not a stagnant or a stationary event while in the case of enso or la nina or even el nino this is a stationary event stagnant event a particular phase of enso event let's say la nina it will stay there or it will be uh, you can say it will continue for 8 to 10 months even more than one year or one and a half year the la nina events will remain here only so this is uh, you can say uh, if you want to measure on time scale then the la nina el nino events or even the iod events these are of seasonal character even uh, you can say uh, this particular phenomena will extend for more than an year as well 
But in the case of this MJO, what will happen? This particular uh, system of enhanced precipitation and suppression of precipitation will gradually move eastwards, probably because of a rotation of earth. Uh, so, this particular system will move eastwards. So, if let us say after two weeks, this enhanced precipitation region or this particular pulse is now here and this dry or the suppression zone, sub, a subsidence zone of air is somewhere here, then what we will get? We will get more rainfall in this region and less rainfall in this region. After further two weeks, this will be the region of enhanced precipitation because this will be the region for ascendance of air and somewhere here there will be subsidence of air mass. I hope you people are getting the point. In the case of, you can understand it like this, that let us say this is a stage. In the case of El Nino, La Nina or even the positive, negative, whatever you want to call, positive, negative phase of IOD, uh, this side let us say you have uh, ascendance of air mass, this side you are having subsidence of air mass. But this will stay there for let us say around one year. In the case of MJO, you can understand it like this, that it is like a, a cycle or a bike. From this side, the person is coming and it is moving like this. While in the case of El Nino Lanina, it is like a stationary exercise bike where a person is uh, uh, trying to do exercises, but the cycle is not moving. So, this is the difference between El Nino and La Nina and the MJO. What is the difference? This is a stationary event, this is mobile or a, mo a mobile event where actually there is a eastward progression of this pulse. Clear? I hope the point is clear. Now, this takes roughly around 30 to 60 days to traverse this path from here to here. When the MJO uh, pulse, it reaches the this region that is the eastern part of uh, Pacific Ocean because of cooler sea surface temperature you know uh, this is a Peru current this is California current and you also know that the this is the zone of upwelling this uh, this pulse gradually fades away so it decays clear but sometimes in this part that is around the Central America sometimes it may, uh, you can say, re-energize. Nevertheless, generally what we uh, observe is that it takes around 30 to 60 days to move from here to here and it generally fades in the eastern uh, Pacific Ocean. Clear? Uh, so, now if somebody asks you what is an MGO, you will say it is a fluctuation in the tropical weather uh, system and it is like a pulse it is like a eastward moving pulse which originates from the western Indian Ocean and it gradually moves uh, in a 30 to 60 days period towards the eastern part of Pacific Ocean. Wherever there is a ascendance arm of air, there we receive more than average precipitation and wherever there is subsidence of air, uh, there we receive less than average precipitation or in that case, you can say there is diminishing of precipitation. Clear? One more thing which you should understand is that apart from apart from this atmospheric circulation, there will obviously be, let us say this is ascendance of air, this will lead to low pressure condition near to the surface, it will lead to winds along the surface of ocean as well these winds will also lead to movement of oceanic surface water. So, this is uh, like a, uh, you can say it involves the atmosphere and it also involves the oceanic surface. There is movement of air near to the surface as well as there is movement of air in the upper tropospheric layer. Okay? Now, there is an important point and that is if there is movement of air in the upper troposphere, 
it will lead to uh, you can say some interference with the uh, jet stream as well because jet streams also move in a wavy curvy method in the meandering way in the upper troposphere so you can say even the mjo or anomalous uh, phenomena of mjo may interact or interfere with the upper air circulation which is jet stream clear i hope uh, these basic things are uh, very clear to you let's now discuss its effects as far as effects of mjo are concerned number 1 is that it has a linkage or interference with the monsoon and when i use the word monsoon there are two regions uh, which have a typical monsoon type of climate one is south asia southeast asia and the second is northern part of australia clear so this mjo it has or it affects the rainfall from monsoon or you can say it affects the intensity of monsoon it also affects the advancement or onset of monsoon so rainfall from monsoon plus onset of monsoon many times during a monsoon season uh, you can say there will be enhanced precipitation if the favorable or the convective cell is present in a favorable location for you it happens for indian monsoon as well as it happens for the australian monsoon in the case of australia since it is generally the northern part of australia which is in the uh, you can say uh, which which is having the monsoon type of climate you can say that the mjo generally affects the northern part of australia as you move towards the southern part of australia the effects of mjo are less prominent clear so what is exactly the effect the effect is that the rainfall from monsoon may be intensified then even the onset date of monsoon can be advanced or delayed depending on the uh, location of the uh, you can say the favorable uh, ascendance arm or the subsidence arm clear during a monsoon season in india if you have a relatively drier period during within a monsoon then it is generally attributed to the uh, mjo cycle only so if there is a subsidence arm of the mjo cycle then uh, you uh, the india or uh, south asia it may have a break in monsoon that is during a monsoon season there is a extensive dry period clear so uh, both rainfall from monsoon both timing of uh, rainfall from monsoon as well as the onset delay uh, all these things they can be uh, linked to the mjo the second uh, effect which the mjo uh, it may cast will be on tropical cyclones tropical cyclones generally in the indian ocean as well as in the pacific ocean to some extent it may have a uh, effect uh, as far as the cyclones of the atlantic ocean is concerned but this is uh, less prominent these uh, mjo cycles generally affect the origin of uh, tropical cyclones the reason is same if there is a a strong ascendance of air from a particular extended region it will lead to development of a low pressure center and around that low pressure center there could be a uh, you can say development of a tropical storm so tropical storms can be uh, intensified tropical storms can be generated because of an mjo event monsoons are also under the effect of mjo the third effect which you should understand is the effect which is which it has uh over the jet streams clear now jet streams are upper tropospheric uh, circulation it is a meandering uh, fast moving wind there will be needing one more uh, video on jet stream to have an understanding nevertheless 
just try to understand that it is a upper tropospheric circulation which is having which is having a meandering path so it will be uh, somewhere it will be trough this all uh, movement of air a fast moving air around 200 kilometers per hour 300 kilometers per hour so this is a very high speed uh, upper tropospheric circulation it will be having somewhere it will be having trough somewhere it will be having crest now if there is a uh, ascendance of air there will be some anomalies in the upper tropospheric uh, circulation as well so there will be some pressure anomalies in the upper troposphere and this will affect the jet stream movement of jet streams as well now jet streams play a very important role as far as the uh, climate or the weather events of the extra trop tropical or temperate regions are concerned please try to understand this is very important let's say this is africa this is europe now there is a jet stream if the mjo event it is interacting uh, let's say this is ascendance arm if it is if the air is moving upwards in the upper troposphere and it is interacting with the or interfering with the movement of jet stream this jet stream which will be having somewhere trough, somewhere crest, its movement will be altered. Now, let's say uh, this particular trough region is somewhere, uh, in some region, it is uh, shifting somewhat southwards or uh, shifting towards lower latitude. Then what it will cause? It will bring the cold polar air mass towards relatively lower latitudes. And that is why it is said that the MJO events, when it interferes with the jet stream, it may trigger some southward or equatorward movement of Arctic air mass. Uh, so it is referred as outbreak of Arctic air mass towards relatively lower latitudes. Similarly, if the jet stream movement is altered and this air mass or this jet stream is move is moving or is shifting somewhere uh, in the towards higher latitude then it will take this warm air mass from the tropical region towards temperate region and this will lead to uh, heat wave like conditions so uh, the mjo event the, it is said that it may affect the upper tropospheric circulation which has a very significant role as far as temperate climate is concerned. So the MJO event may cause the uh, south equatorward movement of the polar air mass, it may cause the poleward movement of tropical air mass creating heat wave like conditions and since these jet streams are also linked to the temperate cyclones. Uh, this anomalous uh, change in behavior of the jet stream may cause flooding as well in North America. So the North America uh, suffers from the, uh, you can say, uh, cold, uh, cold air mass from the Arctic may invade to relatively lower latitudes. It may suffer from heat wave like conditions or uh, it may also suffer from some flooding. Okay. So, uh, as far as the MJO is concerned, I don't want to make this video too much uh, lengthy, but there is one more picture which I had. Uh, you can understand this is all what we uh, have discussed. So, this is the region of enhanced precipitation, there is huge amount of cloud cover, and there is a zone of subsidence of air mass. Now, there is one more important point which I forgot to discuss, and that is let's say there is a ascendance of air from this region and there is cloud cover. So, if there is a huge amount of cloud cover in a particular extensive region, the outward movement or you can say the terrestrial radiation that is outgoing long wave radiations, it will be reduced because there will be a cloud cover in this region. So, when from the satellite uh, you are measuring the outward radiation or the terrestrial radiation from a region and you are finding uh, or you are observing 
that there is a diminishing uh, terrestrial radiation from a particular region, then it uh, it is an indication that it may be a uh, MJO cycle. Clear? So with this, uh, I hope you people will be able to answer uh, all the questions which could be asked in the examination, both for prelims as well as mains. But I will again suggest that you people should at least go and revise the IOD video. If you had, if you were, if you would have not uh, watched that, then please do it. And the El Nino video. Thank you so much for listening patiently. We'll come up with a new and interesting topic in some later series of uh, this explained classes. Thank you.